Hello and welcome to the Chief Architect Kitchen demonstration. My name is Stephanie and I'll be presenting today. I will be designing in Chief Architect Premier, though most of the tools I use today will also be available within Chief Architect Interiors. I do want to take another moment to review our agenda. We'll begin by designing out our space uh, using our wall tools as well as dimensioning tools. We'll also create some custom cabinets on the back of our kitchen today. And then we'll insert appliances. We'll add in some lighting and create an electrical plan. We'll also design an island, modify our ceiling, generate a materials list. I'll show you some rendering options and then we'll conclude with a plan set. So let's jump into the program and get started. When I open up Chief Architect Premiere, I have my architectural tools that appear at the top of the screen. I also have my display options over on the right, and then we even have an edit toolbar in the lower left corner. The buttons on the edit toolbar can be used to edit selected objects, so as we continue through our plan, we'll see more tools that will appear down here that we'll use. We also have many efficiency tools that are also available within Chief Architect to increase productivity. So I'm going to go up to my layer set options to show one of these tools. When we open up the program, our default layer set is selected. Layer sets are used to control the layer settings for different views in a plan or layout file. A layer set consists of a complete list of layers in the current plan or layout along with the display settings for each layer as for a particular type, view, or purpose. Since we are designing a kitchen today, I'm going to switch to our kitchen and bath layer set. Now, most interior layers will be revealed during the design process. Please note you also have the ability to make changes to layer sets. So you can change the display or what is used within that current set. I'll click cancel for now. Another efficiency tool is our annotation sets. Annotation sets are simply a fast and easy way to switch from a collection of saved defaults so right now we have our quarter inch scale dimension default set. We're going to switch over to our NKBA dimension defaults. This will help when we dimension further within our plan. Now that we've made a few productivity changes, I'm ready to begin drawing in my plan. So let's select our wall options. If I hover over our wall tools here, this is my parent tool or my exterior wall. If I click on it, it'll drop down child options to choose from. These are a subset of different wall options we have available within the program for our straight walls. We also have curved wall options over to the right. I'm going to select my interior wall as we are designing an interior space today, and then I'll just click within my plan and click to drag out this wall. I can get dimensions close to accurate, but they don't have to be exact because I'll come back in here and make some changes later. So I'm just going to draw out some walls and then we'll connect our walls. And I'm going to draw out an additional area down here. This will be for a wine cellar. Let's take a camera view to see what we've designed so far. We do have different camera options available. I'll first start by taking a dollhouse overview. This will cut the roof off of my structure so we can see down into our plan. And you can see just by connecting walls that we have a flooring that has appeared this flooring option can be changed within your default settings. We also have molding that has appeared, interior walls that have a nice paint finish. And we can click out of this view and take a different camera view. So I'm going to take a full camera this time by just clicking in my plan and dragging out my camera. And this will display inside the home with our flat ceiling. So you can see we also have a ceiling that's automatically placed within the program. While I'm in this view, we're going to open up our room specification dialog. I just tapped on my space bar. I'm going to click and click tab again to open up my room and control E will grab this dialog and open it up. So this brings us to our room specification dialog. Currently our room is unspecified. Since we're designing a kitchen today, I'm going to select kitchen and now this room will be displayed as a kitchen. You can also define and change the defaults for your room here. 
And then you can also specify the living area, what you want included, if it's going to be a conditioned room or an unconditioned room, and so forth. If you drop down to the Structure tab, here's where you can control your ceiling and floor heights, your rough ceiling and finished ceiling. We can see now this is where we can uh, modify if we want a roof over the room or even a flat ceiling. We will make changes to our ceiling a little later on, so we'll get back into this dialog a little later. I'll click OK to accept the changes. Then we'll jump back over to our plan view and we can dimension out our space. So the best way to dimension first would be to use our automatic dimensioning tools. And when I'm in my plan view, I have the option to dimension from using auto exterior dimensions, auto interior dimensions, or even my auto NKBA dimensions. So I'm going to select this option. Since we did label this room a kitchen, we're able to quickly get our automatic NKBA dimensions displayed and you can see they locate to the interior wall surface. So I do want to make a few changes. I'll click on the wall and then on the dimension that I want to modify I'll set this at 214 inches and you can see we have some options over here on the right. You can move from the left end, both ends, or the right end. I'll click enter and just accept the default. And then we're going to also change this wall as well. This will be 257 and 7 eighths of an inch and click enter. And then we can zoom down here and you can see that I didn't get any dimensions that populated. This is because our wine cellar was not labeled as a kitchen or a bath. So I'm going to jump over to my manual dimensioning options and from here I can choose from my manual dimensioning tool. I have an end-to-end -end dimension, angular dimensions, I also have interior dimensions. This is the one I want to grab so I'll just grab that tool, click and drag within the room and we're able to get interior dimensions that will populate. So I'll tap on my space bar. I'm going to click on the dimension again that I want to modify. I'm going to set this at 62 inches, hit enter. And then we're also going to change this wall as well. So I am going to modify this to 81 and hit enter. And just to note, as a side note, our software thinks in inches, so I don't have to place that inch marker when I'm dimensioning. If we zoom out of here, click on our dimensioning tool, just make sure it's selected. I can hold down my shift key and mark key around my plan, and this is going to pick up all the dimensions that we've placed. So if I click delete, I can remove those to clean up the plan, and I also want to hide my kitchen room label while I'm in this view. So I'm going to tap on my space bar, click on that label. And then if we go down into the edit toolbar, we have the option to select the object layer properties tool. You can see that we're using room labels. They're used as well as displayed and I'm just going to deselect the display option and click OK to accept that change. Now our plan has cleaned up quite a bit. From here I want to move on to placing cabinets. So I want to take one more look at our plan and show you where we're headed. So we're going to work on this back wall. We'll start in the left corner here. So I'll click on my cabinet tools and we have different cabinet options to choose from. We can select between a base cabinet, a wall cabinet, a full height, soffit, shelf, partition. We can add a custom countertop as well as a backsplash. I'm going to grab my full height cabinet and then I'm going to click to place it in the corner. And I want to show you that if we bring our cursor directly into the corner, it's going to modify this cabinet to a corner cabinet. So that's an option for you to use within the program. Today I don't want a corner cabinet, so I'm actually going to delete it. But we can just go ahead and place our cabinet in the direction that we want it to go. And I'll click. We can also make changes to our cabinet. So I can select the cabinet. We can open it up by going to the open door or clicking Control E on the keyboard. And this will bring up our full height cabinet specification dialog. Here is where I can make modifications to the height, for example. So I'm going to change the height here to 108 inches. I'll click Tab on my keyboard. My cabinet over here is going to adjust as I make these modifications. I'm also going to set the width here to 27 inches. I'll click Tab again. And then I'm going to keep the depth set at 24 inches. You also have control over the finished floor to top height dimension as well as the finished floor to bottom. 
You can specify a toe kick. I will keep the defaults for now. We can also get into our box construction. Here's where we can select between framed or frameless cabinets. We can also specify a traditional overlay or a full overlay. And then you can determine the type of corner treatment you want. So if you want it to be rounded or clipped, we're gonna keep it at none. We also have a front sides and back panel. When you click on a particular object within the cabinet module, you can modify it. We'll make changes to, to our additional cabinets. So I'm not gonna to touch upon this dialog too much. We'll jump down into the door and drawer. This is where you can change handles and hinges, so different handle styles. You can also get into our accessories panel and determine if you want pilasters or feet. We have a moldings panel. This is where you can add a molding to your cabinets. We have a layer, fill style, material changes can be adjusted here. Um, label information can be updated on this panel and then object information. I want to click OK though so we can see what we've changed so far. So just by changing a few dimensions, our cabinet has significantly updated. We have a tool down in our edit toolbar that could set this cabinet as our default. And I'm gonna accept that change. So I'll click here and it's gonna give me a pop-up just letting us know that the full height cabinet defaults have been updated. So we'll click OK. And to see this in action, we'll go back up here to our full height cabinet option and then click right next to the existing cabinet. And you can see now that full height cabinet is the one that we've modified. So if I wanna make any changes to this one, I can quickly select the cabinet and I'm just gonna open up the dialog, control E on that keyboard again. And I'm going to change the width on here. We'll set this at 33 inches. The depth will still remain the same. I'm gonna jump down into my front sides and back panel. And here's where we're gonna add in our double oven. The first thing I need to do is click on my double door and then I'm going to change the item height here to 30. Then I'll grab the item below and I'm actually going to split this horizontally and I'll keep the item selected here, change the height on this one to 56 inches and then I'm also going to change the item type to an appliance. Here's where we can get down and specify what we want to enter into that cabinet. So in Chief Architect, we do have different library options to choose from. We have our core catalogs. This category contains a wide selection of 3D symbols and images that you can use. They come with the program. We also have our bonus catalogs, and we regularly post new and exciting library catalogs available for download. We also have our manufacturer content and a variety of name brand library catalogs are available here. And then we have our user catalog. And this is where you can get in and create your own catalog of items so that you can quickly access them. So I knew I was gonna use a double wall oven. I actually put this in a folder so I could quickly access it. And then now I'm just gonna grab it, click OK, and it'll automatically insert it. I'm gonna click on the component below and then we're gonna change this last item to a drawer and I'll keep the dimension set at 15 inches. We'll click OK and then you can see how it's updated within my plan. Next, I'd like to place a base cabinet. So I'll go up to my cabinet tools and just click to place that cabinet. I'm also gonna make some changes here. So I'm just gonna select the cabinet, click Control E to open it up. And here's where I'm gonna change the width on this cabinet to 27 inches click tab and I'll accept all of the other defaults and click OK. Now I'm also going to make this base cabinet a default cabinet so I'll just click and set it as my default and I'll get that pop-up alerting me that it's been updated so when I go grab that base cabinet again it'll be my default base cabinet. We're going to double click on this cabinet to open it up for specification. I'm going to change the width here to 33 inches and click tab on my keyboard. We'll also drop down to our countertop section and I'm going to remove the right side of this countertop so we'll set this at zero and click tab and this will allow for clearance for us to place a range so we'll click OK and then we're going to get into our library. We'll do this a different way. We'll go up to view and down to library browser 
and this will pop us right into our user catalog since that's the location we were at last time. And I'm going to grab my range. So I'll just click on the item within my library and then I'll just pull it next to my cabinet and click down on my mouse. Next I'm going to add in another base cabinet so I'll just go up and grab that base cabinet and place it right next to my range. I also need to get in here, change a few components so I'm going to set the width here at 21 inches, click tab and this time I'm going to remove the left side of the countertop overhang so we'll set that at zero, click tab so we can see that adjust. Then we'll drop down into the front sides and back panel I'm going to click to remove my drawer, so I'll just click delete on my keyboard, and then I'll click on the item I want to change. So for this door, I am going to change this to a pullout drawer. And we can also see that it dropped our hardware to the center of this cabinet. This would make it a little difficult to open, we'd have to bend down quite a bit. So what I want to do is change the placement of the hardware by going into the door and drawer panel and then I'll drop down to the vertical position. So I'm going to change the distance from the top to 3 inches. I'll click tab on my keyboard and then we'll click OK to see the adjustments within our plan. And then I'll just move this right up against my range. So we have one more base cabinet to apply. I'll go back up to my base cabinet tool and then I'm just going to click to drop that right in here next to our existing cabinet. We'll double click on the cabinet to open it up for specification and here is where I'm going to set the width to 33 inches and click tab. We're going to be placing a refrigerator on the right side of this cabinet so I'm also going to drop down into my countertop section and here is where I will remove the right countertop overhang. I'll set that at zero and click tab to see the adjustment and then we'll click OK and we can see that's been updated in our plan. If we want to rotate around our plan just a bit, we'll go up to our architectural toolbar, click on our move with camera with mouse, this is under our orbit tools, and then we can quickly move around our plan. So you're able to just shift down, now I'm holding my mouse with my scroll wheel and this will allow us to look into this space a little bit more clear. So we do have new catalog to Chief Architect X10 and that is our Sub-Zero catalog which we're very excited about. So I'm going to grab my fridge. I grabbed this, cat this out of our manufacturer catalogs and then brought it down to my user catalog so we could access it quickly. So now that I've found the refrigerator I want to use, I'm just going to click within my plan to place it. And to get a better view of this space, I'm actually going to get into my floor plan. And the first thing I can see is that my refrigerator is not centered in my space. So I need to go up to my architectural toolbar again and I'm going to grab a CAD line. And I'll just click within my plan here. Then I'll select the refrigerator and click on my center object tool and center this refrigerator directly on my plan here. So I can center it. I need to grab the line and then click to center it and now that has been adjusted. So then I can just grab that CAD line, we'll click tab to select it, and delete it. The next thing I'm going to want to do is add in some partitions and then a wall cabinet. So to do this, I'm actually going to go up and take an orthographic view, so we'll take a wall elevation view of this wall. This will just allow us for a little bit more accuracy, and I'm going to grab my partition tool. So I'll go up to my cabinet options and select my partition tool and then I'll just click here within my plan. I'm not too concerned about getting that accurate because we can open it up so control E and here is where we can make adjustments to the dimension of this partition. So the height on this partition is going to be set at 87 inches. I'll click tab to drop down to the width and modify this to 3 inches as well as the depth I'm going to change to 24 inches and then I'll click OK to accept those changes. And now that that partition has been placed and bumped up right next to the refrigerator, I'm going to copy it and reflect it on the other side. Then we'll get into our wall cabinet tool and I'm just going to click right above that refrigerator. We'll double click to open it up for specification and here's where we can change the height of this cabinet to 21 inches. I'll change the width to 48 and then I'll make an adjustment to the depth at 24 as well. We'll click OK to see those changes 
And then I can see I also need to make adjustments and move this cabinet into place. I need to click on my center object tool to center it above the refrigerator. And then I also need to open up the specification one more time. There's another section that I did not adjust and that is my finished floor to top dimension. I want to change this to 108 and this will move this directly into place and then we'll click OK and that will adjust. So we do have some more wall cabinets that we want to add to our plan here. So I'll just grab this cabinet, click to place it. We'll click Control E, open it up on the keyboard. And for this cabinet, I'm going to specify the width here to 33 inches and click Tab to see that adjust. And then now we need to get down into our front sides and back panel and we're going to split this horizontally. So now we can have two double doors and I can change my dimension here to 20 inches. So now that it's selected, I'll just override the dimension height and set that at 20 inches and then we'll click OK. And we can see that the adjustment has been made. We can set this cabinet as our default. Now it's going to alert us that it has been updated and if we go back into our wall cabinet tool and place it, it's going to place that cabinet as we selected. Now I do need to get in here and also change the width on this cabinet and we're going to set this at 18. And you're going to see that it's going to automatically update that to a single door. And then we'll just move this back into place. Okay, I can also see we need some ventilation for this space. So we're going to add in our wall hood. So I'll just click on that library item and then I can click to place it directly above the range. And just to make sure it's centered, we can just click within the plan and center it. And then we also want to add in a pot filler. So I do have another library accessory that I'll add over here. And I'll just click on it and then click within my plan to apply it. And now that has been adjusted. So we can also pan down this view as well by just clicking down on that mouse with the scroll wheel. And we have two more wall cabinets to add in. I'll go up to my wall cabinet tools, click on the tool, then click within my plan. And this time I'm going to use my edit handle. So I can select this edit handle and just drag this dimension directly into place. And then I'll grab one more wall cabinet and then I'll just click within my plan to place it. We also have the ability to add a custom backsplash. So I'm going to go down to that tool now. I'll click on it and then I'll click within my plan so we can place that custom backsplash. If I tapped on my space bar, you can see that we have a subway tile that has been added. I want to add my own tile. So I'm actually going to double click to open this up for specification and we can change the layer here. So the material that we use for that layer. So I'm going to click select material. And here's an option where we can get into our library materials or our plan materials. I'm actually going to get into my user catalog again. And I'll get into kitchen and select this kitchen tile and we'll click OK and OK to accept those changes. And you can see that it's been updated. So I'm going to jump over to my full camera. This will give us a better perspective of our new backsplash material and I can see I also want to make an adjustment to my countertop material. So I know that I want to pick out a particular tile here so I'm going to go into my Cambria catalog and I'm going to select Swanbridge. We are able to navigate through our folders or we can also even type in a word. I'll type in Swanbridge and hit enter and you can see I now have the material available to use. So I also have in my lower left corner, you can see in our edit toolbar, that we have different options for pasting materials. Right now I have component mode selected. So if I click on this counter here, you can see that that single countertop is going to be updated. Component mode works great too if we were changing materials for a drawer, for example, and then wanted our doors a different color. The component is only going to change that item that we have selected. You also have object. For example, if we wanted to update an entire cabinet, we could use object mode. Room mode works great for updating all of the countertops. So that's what I'm going to select right now. We also have floor mode. This is great if we had multiple cabinets, for example, that we wanted updated on a floor. Maybe they're in a bathroom 
And then plan view is great if you want to make a material adjustment to multiple floors within a plan. So you have many different controls down here for updating materials within our plans. While we're in this perspective view, I want to take another moment and highlight another feature that has been added with Chief Architect X10, and that is the ability to insert items within cabinets. So I'll double click on our base cabinet here, and I'm going to drop down to my front sides and back panel, and then I'll select our drawer. And I'm going to click Specify, and on this tab, we can specify the type of pull out that we want to insert. So we're going to go to library and I'm going to drop down into my user catalog down to kitchen and here's where I've put my new Reva shelf organizer and this is also a new manufacturer catalog that's now available so we'll click OK and I'll click OK to add it in and I want to see this new organizer so right now we have the option to specify the percentage of the cabinet being open. I'll change this to 95, click tab, and then we want to make sure that we highlight down here that we want our drawers open. And this will show our cabinet drawer open. So we'll click OK. And now in the plan you can see that it has been opened. And you can turn around here and see that it has been adjusted. You can also select a wall cabinet, for example. We'll double click to open it up and go down to front sides and back. And we need to specify that we want our doors open. So we can show doors can also be open as well. And you can get in here and specify different percentages and make the adjustments that you want necessary for your plan. I'll back out of here once so we can click to close those again. I don't really need them open now and we can also close our base cabinet. But I just wanted to highlight that so you have that tool available moving forward. Now that we've completed this back wall, I want to move on to modifying our ceiling. So I'll exit out of our library browser, and then I'm also going to exit out of our wall elevation, and we can get into our floor plan, and we can make some adjustments. So right now we're using our kitchen and bath set. I'm going to switch over to our roof plan set and then we're going to build a roof so we'll go up to our build dialog and down to roof build roof and we want to select build roof planes as well as auto rebuild roof planes and I'll show you why in a minute we'll click OK you can see here that we have a hip roof placed if we took a camera view we could get a better perspective of what's going on we can see that we automatically have a hip roof placed on the structure I can quickly change this though, so we'll drop down our plan view. I'll zoom in, and then if we want a better idea, we'll click over on our camera view as well. And I'm going to change two of my walls so that we can modify this to a gable roof. So I'm just tapping on my space bar. We have a shortcut in our edit toolbar that will allow us to change these walls into gable. And then I'll click on the adjacent wall to adjust that as well and now we can see that's been adjusted. So I can click out of this view now. We have our camera view, so we can kind of slide here. I'm going to have a flat ceiling on part, and then we're also going to vault the other part. So what I need to do is get into my wall tools, and I'm going to place a room divider. So I've selected the room divider, and I'm just going to click within my plan. Let's grab that wall again, and then we'll select it and we need to turn the layer on. So we're going to turn this wall layer on. We'll click yes and then we'll center it within the room. So we want to make sure it's completely center. And then what I'm going to do from here to open up this room is we'll keep this one flat but we'll open, we'll tap on our space bar, double click to open up the room and I'm going to drop down into the structure panel. This is why I highlighted in the beginning we have different options over under ceiling to change the roof over this room or to modify the flat ceiling over this room. So I'm going to click to deselect this option. We'll click OK. And now you can see we've made this adjustment and we have a nice vault over on this side. We can add in some skylights to bring some more light in here. I'll just click within my plan to place a skylight. And then I'm also going to click on the dimension to modify it. And we'll move this right down into our plan. And then I want to make a few copies. So we have the ability to go down to 
our edit toolbar and click on multiple copy and I'm going to create three more skylights so we'll click OK here and now if I grab that skylight and pull it into place you can see now I have three more skylights that have been added. We can make adjustments as well if you want to highlight those. Just marquee around and make sure they're centered within the plan and that will adjust. With our ceiling raised I now want to make an update to those cabinets. I want to add in a molding so we'll double click on our floor plan camera view and we're going to get in here click control or hold down control as we select all of those cabinets. I'm in my wall cabinet specification dialog. I'm going to click on moldings, add new and we'll get into our core catalogs, architectural moldings and I'm going to select a crown molding and we'll click OK. We have a nice preview of that molding you can see that the height here is set at one and a half inches, the width at one and three quarters of an inch, and I need to adjust the vertical offset. So this is actually going to raise the molding off of the box. So I need to match the height in the opposite direction. So I'll set this at negative one and a half inch, and then we'll click OK. Well, before we click OK, there's one other adjustment I want to make. Let's get into our door and drawer panel. And here's where I'm going to adjust the type of handles we're using. So the style is currently set at the default, but I want to change my door to a vertical pool. And up from the bottom is going to be set at 3. We'll click Tab to see that adjustment. And then I'll also drop down into my drawer handle because we do have one cabinet that has a drawer. And we'll specify this at a horizontal pool. And we'll click OK to see the adjustment. Now we can see if I click on the space bar that my upper cabinets have a molding as well as the hardware has been adjusted. But if we look below, our base cabinets also need to be adjusted. So what I need to do to make the adjustment without getting back into the dialog is I can go up and use my object eyedropper and I'm going to click on one of these cabinets that I modified. Then I'm going to go down into the lower left corner in my edit toolbar and click select properties to paint. And this is going to load all the properties of that cabinet that are being used. So I'm going to clear all. So I want to change our door handle material as well as style and then my drawer handle material as well as style. We'll click OK and then we're going to click on the cabinets that we want to find and we'll select those and make those adjustments. And now that has been adjusted. Let's move on to designing our custom island. So we'll exit out of our camera view. We're going to take a different camera view and we need to switch back to our kitchen and bath set. Let's go into our camera tools and I'm going to select a dollhouse view this time. This will let us see directly into the plan. It'll help when we're wanting to rotate around and look more further at that island. And then I'll bring down our floor plan. And I'm going to grab my cabinet tools. So we'll click on a base cabinet and just place this base cabinet within our plan. So I can quickly rotate this cabinet into the opposite direction so that it's facing those wall cabinets. From here, I'm going to get in here and open up my cabinet specification dialog. And I'm just going to change the width on this cabinet to 33. We'll click OK. I will go in and set this as my default cabinet. And we'll click OK. We'll go and grab a base cabinet again. Now we have a 33 inch base cabinet. Double click. I need to expand out this cabinet a little further. So I'm going to set this at 36 inches and click tab. And that will adjust. I also need to get into my front sides and back panel. And I need to make sure I change this drawer to a false drawer so that I can add in my sink. So we'll get in and specify false drawer. We'll click OK and then we can add the sink after we finish with this side of our island. I'm just going to grab one more base cabinet and we'll click and place it and we're good there. And then we can panel around a little bit over here so we can see a little further in. I'm just going to get a little closer to our island. And then I'll open up our library. So another way to open up our library is to click Control L on our keyboard. And I'll get into my user catalog. 
So then I'm going to click on the sink that I've added. So I have an undermount sink. I'll just click on the cabinet I want to apply it to, and now it has been added. I also want to add a custom panel on the back side, so we do need to place one more base cabinet to do this. So I'll just grab that base cabinet and then click within my plan to place it, and I'm just going to grab my edit handles to put this in place. We'll click Control E on the keyboard, and I need to change the back side of this cabinet so I'm going to delete this option out and then I'm going to make this a door panel and we'll click OK and we'll swing and take a different camera view so we're just going to orbit around the plan and this will take us to the other side of our island. Now I need to open up a new plan so we'll go to file new plan to create this custom panel that we're going to be working with. And I'm going to bring up an image. This is the custom panel we're going to create. So you can see we just have an inset here and it is a full panel that's going to align the backside of our island. So let's jump back into the program and then we can click on this view. We're going to get into our orthographic camera tools and this time I'm going to take a cross section elevation view so I'll just click and drag within my plan and I'll zoom back out of here. I'm going to get into my polyline tools. I'm going to select my polyline solid tool, click and drag within my plan, then click to add in my dimensions and I can make the adjustment on the opposite side as well click enter to adjust. I now want to copy and paste this polyline solid in place. I'll take this new item and drag it up and then drag it in as well to make sure that we can center that. So I need to go to my center object tool and then center within that polyline solid. Just drag it down into place and then I'm going to go to my multiple copy tool and I'll click again. We're going to place three more copies this time of this object and then I'll just click within my plan to drag them out into place for those panels. So now that we've added two polyline solids I'm going to click on my original polyline solid and convert it. So we're going to go down to convert to a plain polyline and select polyline solid. We'll click OK and we'll keep the thickness here set at an inch. We'll click OK and then I'm going to grab those panels and click Control E and I'm going to place a hole in that polyline solid. I do need to make one more polyline so I'm just going to copy over the original. I'm also going to open up this polyline solid so click Control E on the keyboard and I'm going to set this at a half of inch and we'll click OK. To see what's going on I'm going to go down to my working plan view I can see that that polyline solid, if we click on it, has been placed in front of my original. So I'm actually going to hold down control and bring it back and then we'll just move it right into place and then center it to make sure it is aligned. And that's been adjusted so we'll get back into our elevation view. And to get an idea of what's been going on we're going to take a perspective of this and you can see now that we have a new panel. So we want to add this to our library, so we're going to go up to Tools, down to Symbol, Convert to Symbol, and we're going to add this as a cabinet door or drawer, and we'll add it to our library. So we'll click OK, and I'm going to rename this to Panel Island, and then I will move this up into my user catalog and we will be able to adjust this and add this to our island. So I'll exit out of this view and then I'll also exit out of my elevation view. We can even work out of this plan view now. We don't need to save it. And when we get back into this option, I can grab that panel island, click to apply it, and then I can see there's an open toe. So I want to remove that toe kick. I'm going to go down to toe kick, click 0 for that dimension, 0 for the depth, and then close the toe, and then we'll click OK, and that will be adjusted. I'm also going to bring down my plan view as well here, and I'll make another adjustment. I'm going to click on that base cabinet, 
and then I'm going to click one more time. This will allow me to grab that countertop and I'm going to pull that countertop out just a bit more so that we have some clearance for seating. I also want to add a different color to my island. So I, I know a specific color that I have in mind. So I'm just going to type that in here. It's a blue. I'll click enter and that will bring up the color that I want to apply. And I'll just click to spray that onto my cabinets here and that will get them updated. So I'm also going to pan around my plan to get the other cabinets on that back side. and then we'll want to pan around the opposite side just to make sure that they're all updated. I also, since I'm in this view, I'm going to grab the countertop material and paste it as well onto my countertop. And then we also want to make sure that the hardware gets added to the island. So we'll get in here and use our object eyedropper one more time. I'm going to click on that base cabinet and make sure we load the correct material so we'll clear all and then we'll slide down and make sure we get our handle material and style as well as our drawer material and style. We'll click OK and then click on those cabinets that need to be adjusted. So I'll click out of this camera view. We can take a different camera view. We'll get in here and just pull out a floor camera. I can see that I want to add in some additional lighting. So what I'll do is click within my plan. I'm just going to bring down this plan view. And I have some lights that I've added to my catalog here, my user catalog. So if I go and I just scroll through my folder, I'm going to grab my pendant light. And I'll click within my plan to apply one of those lights. And I can adjust that just to make sure that it's lined up accurately. I want to place that right there. And then I'm going to copy. We'll make two more copies. And click OK. And bring those copies out into place as well. You can also block items together. So now that we've spent time working on this, I'm going to hide our room divider. So we'll click to remove that from this view, but I can marquee around this selection, group these items together, and then I can add it to my library so I can use it again. I spent a lot of time designing, so if I wanted to rename that, I would put Island Blue, and I'm going to move this up into my user folder, and now I can use it again in the future. So I do want to move on to adding in some lighting options, but before that we do that, we are going to place a door into our plan. So we actually have a couple doors that we need to add in. So I'm going to try to expand out these views so you can see a little bit better of our plan and what we're looking to do. We'll stick within our full camera and I'll just move along this wall so you can see in this corner where I'm going to add in a door. We haven't touched upon our door options yet, but these door tools are also located in our architectural toolbar and this is our parent tool and I'm just going to click on a standard hinge door to bring that door into our plan. And you can see by just clicking down I'm able to apply it. I can also flip this hinge side if I'd like pretty quick as well as change the swing side. So we can do that quickly by just going down to the edit toolbar. We can also open up the dialog by clicking control E and here's where you can see the door style that we're using. We can also get into our library and make a change as well. So I want to change from a panel to a glass door and we'll get into our French door options and then we'll just kind of click through the catalog here and see if we find one that looks good. And this one looks good for my design today so I'll click OK. And then I'm also going to get into my materials panel. I just wanted to point out though that you can change the lintel lights casing. There's a lot of different options. But if I jump down to materials, I'm going to adjust the interior color as well as the exterior color. I can click to select that 
and then we can select the material. I can open up my library materials or get into plan. I know I just want a standard black material finish, so I'll click enter and we'll just get a black to apply and click OK and now that has been updated. So we'll click OK and we have a nice door that has been applied. I can also rotate around my plan here. We'll get in and just pan around and then move along this wall. I'm going to open up my library again by clicking Control and then L on the keyboard. And it looks like it was open just very small over here in the corner so I'm just going to pull this into place and I've already created some kitchen doors so I've blocked these together using an architectural block similar to what we did with our island so I'll just click and place those doors and then I can get over into my plan view over on this side and we can center the doors so we'll click to center the object within our plan and now we have some doors that have been added. I also want to get in and change my background image and I'll show you how we can do that by getting into our bonus catalogs and then we'll also actually let's get into our core content backdrops we'll get into land flat and we have a lakeshore beach plan that I want to add so we'll just click on that window and now we have different scenery to to look at now outside of that window. We can zoom out of here and just by zooming out I can see that I also want to add in some of my bar stools. So just while we're in our library catalogs I want to scroll down and we'll also add in our bar stools. So I'll just click to place those within the plan and this is a good time to just jump over to our plan view yet again and we also want to make sure everything is aligned so I'm going to select those bar stools click to center them along the island and then we even want to make sure that the island is centered so I'm going to grab that island and then make sure it's centered within the room now I want to switch over to my electrical set and I'm going to open up our electrical tools we do have different electrical options within Chief Architect. We can zoom in here. We're going to place a light within the plan and then I'm going to copy. We're going to go down to our multiple copy tool and we're going to set four additional copies and then we're going to also set one additional copy going in the opposite direction. We'll click OK. So this time instead of clicking down on the left side of my mouse, I'm actually going to click down on the right side of my mouse. We'll pull these out into place and then pull them over within our plan and then we can click down and those lights will be applied to our plan. So with those lights adjusted I want to add in some switches and we can place those here. I'll place another switch over here and then a switch by the door. I also want to show you how we can get in and auto place our electrical outlets. So since this is a kitchen, I can click and it'll automatically place those. And if you zoom in even further, you can see we have GFCI outlets placed. And now we can get back in here and connect all of our electrical components. So I'm just going to go in and connect my lighting and go around my plan. And I can also connect this switch here and it'll connect and make a three-way switch. You can see that by zooming in. And then we'll go and connect our island lights as well. And I want to show you we have control over where these locate so we can even use these to make adjustments to those connections. If we don't want them overlapping, you can just select them and then move those into place. So now we'll go back into our kitchen and bath set. I'm going to exit out of my library browser and then I'll get up into my tools tab and I'm going to show you how we can generate a materials list. So our materials list can be calculated for all floors, for a room or an area. I'll select all floors. This will bring up our materials list and you can see we have different category options at the top. These can be edited and modified so if you have pricing you can type that in here and then our total cost will update over on the right. 
We did spend time adding in cabinets to our kitchen design today, so I wanted to drop down to that section and show you under size and description how we can populate the information we applied today. And then we also made modification to our countertop. We changed it to a Cambria countertop, and you can see under manufacturer that this information automatically updated. Materials lists can be exported. We have different options for exporting. We can export a TXT file, a CSV, an XML, or even an HTML. I'll click Cancel. We're going to close out of our materials list. I'm not going to save it today, and this will bring us back into our plan view. If we click back over to our full camera, we can show some rendering techniques here by going up to our architectural toolbar, clicking on rendering techniques. The current view we're in is just our standard render. We have the option to select a vector view, a glass house. This will allow us to see within the cabinets and appliances. It's great for kitchen and baths. You can drop down into our dual tone option. And then we even have a technical illustration. And some more artistic camera options would be our painting option or watercolor. And this is showing a watercolor with a line drawing on top of it. So if you go down to Technique Options and click on it, I can show you that over on our panels you can choose the type of render and then we have the ability to update and change attributes over on the right and you can see we have our line drawing on top selected. I'll click OK. And then I can quickly transition back to just a standard line drawing. New to Chief Architect X10 is our physically based render and this will produce a quick render with the real time. You can see the lighting effects have been changed and the material reflections have been adjusted as well. We can also generate a layout sheet. We have different options to do this. So we'll go up to File. You can select a new layout. We can even open a layout. I've created just this quick template here. And when we jump into our layout, it's automatically going to bring us to page one. You can see we have our logo added here. If we go to zero, this is where we can delete or make changes to these items that will update our whole plan set. So we can type it in here. If we wanted to update with our plan name, we'll just put grand and click OK. And you can see that that will apply. And then if we go back down to page one, for example, that will update. If I go back into my camera view, I can send this view to my layout sheets by going to File, Send to Layout, and then you can specify the page number that you want to send it to. So we'll select page one, click OK, and now that render has been added. I can even grab my edit handles and crop down the image if I don't want to show the entire kitchen. That's an option in the software. So let's get back into our floor plan. We'll send a couple more views to our layout sheet. So we'll grab an elevation view. We'll take that wall elevation, just click and drag it out. This will bring up our wall elevation of our cabinets. And then I can dimension these out. So we'll go up to our automatic dimensioning tools. We'll click on our NKBA dimensions. And then I'll just go to File, Send to Layout. And then I'll send this view to page two. I want to show you we can also change the scaling. So I'll modify this to a half inch scale. Click OK. And now that will update and send to page two. We can also create cabinet schedules within the software. So to do this, we'll go to CAD and then CAD Detail Management. I'm going to go to New and then I'll put Cabinet. Click OK and then we'll go up to Tools, down to Schedules, Cabinet Schedule, and I'll add in a cabinet schedule here. We'll double click to open it up, and I'm gonna make some changes. So here is all of our available columns, and these are the columns that are gonna be included in our schedule. I'll keep Number, but I do want to delete Label, so we're gonna to click to select it, and then click Remove, and that will remove it. I'm also going to add in a perspective view, so we'll click to add it, and that'll populate it right below our number. I do want to keep the quantity. We can remove the floor. 
and we'll remove the description code manufacturer and then comments for now and then we'll click OK and you're going to see that our cabinet schedule will get updated. So then we can also send this view to a layout sheet. We'll go to File, Send to Layout, and I'll send this to page 3. And we'll change the scaling to a half inch scale. We'll click OK. And you can see that that will update. And it's going to alert me that it's too large, so we'd probably want to rescale that. Um, and to do that, we can go down to our ruler option and rescale it to maybe a half or a quarter inch scale and we'll click OK and you can see that that will adjust. So to show you a more completed plan I'll just click over here. This is for our grand residence and then if you scroll through you can see our floor plan, our cabinet schedule and then that elevation view. So that's going to conclude our presentation today. I want to thank you for attending. We do have Chief Architect Premier and Interiors available for purchase as well as rental. Most of the tools I use today, like I said, were available in both programs. If you do have any questions, feel free to call our sales department. We'll be around for a few more minutes. You can also chat those in and we'll be happy to assist you as well. Thank you so much for joining today and we hope to see you at another Chief Architect webinar.